shorts? Uh, 2003. 2003. So Lewis uh, told me today, he said, oh, Eric, I have a knot on my shorts. And he says, he has. this is like the impossible knot to get rid of. So um, I'm going to try my best to get rid of this knot. I'm pretty confident I can do it. So it's pretty tight. I thought maybe I could, you know, do it like this way and push it out. But that doesn't, I don't think this works, you know. This works for uh, garbage bags. You know, I'm doing garbage bags. So let me put my ring down. Put it over there. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get one of, I'm going to get a little small flat head screwdriver from the JP Toolkit. And try to do it this way. I know, Clinton. So my hope is I can wedge this in and then stretch this enough. So I can make some thing. Okay. This is pretty snug. Hopefully I don't stab myself. This is one of those things that I kind of think to myself, man, this is why it's so important to be mindful about uh, this kind of stuff. Man, this really does feel like... See, so I'm trying to loosen this part over here. Someone's going to be like, Erica, you're going to stab yourself. Okay. See that? Okay. One, two, oh, here we go. Ta-da! What the hell? Is this good? What? Where'd the... Wait a second, do you guys see it? Freaking thing is backwards. So, what the hell is going on here? Is this Was this an elastic band that I'm missing out on? You guys see it though, right? Like maybe the end loop. You guys see it? So this thing looks like it should have had one of those things that, you know, make it tighter. Uh, I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about. It's like this little plastic piece. So I thought this was going to be two loops at the end. It isn't. I think there was a little plastic bit that was over here, but I took that out in less than a minute. You know, just, but uh, yeah. Yeah, this is not. I almost want to cut this in half and then just have it tied like that, you see? But I'm going to try and find one of those. Uh... I know, I know, I know, you know, you guys know what I'm talking about. It's this stuff. It's the stuff that goes on bags. See this stuff? This stuff, I think, was goes right here. So, because I don't need this, in my opinion, I don't think I need two of them, I'm going to just take it from over here. Because, yeah, I don't think I need this. Let's undo this knot. I think this is definitely, this definitely falls under repair, right? <laughs> okay. Grab my little screwdriver. Actually, do I even need this? I don't want to undo the knot. I don't even know why this thing has two of them. Like, I think it just tightens it, but I don't even use this anyway, so. Uh, spare parts. So, I'm going to put this. See this thing over here? I'm missing this, so I'm going to put this over there. Now if I wanted to, could just cut it off, but I'm going to do it this way. So we're taking this off of this. 
see. I'm gonna fold this, I mean, not this, over here. This is the kind of thing that I actually enjoy doing. It's like repairing things, reusing things. I'm just trying to make a nice knot. Put this off on the side. Let's close the toolkit because freaking thing I need more space. I don't mind having things around, but this is a pretty small work area, yeah. So let's see over here. Do I need this? Uh, we'll see. I kinda wanna put it away. So um I think it looks like Flatten this thing out. Stretch it. So I would say I will do it like this. So let's see if I can do it this way. So the way this thing goes is you you put it in here and then you pull it out from the other side. I don't know if this is big enough to be honest. I think this is too small. But you don't know unless you try, right? Yeah, it's not going to fit in there. I don't think it will. Yeah, this is too small. I need a bigger one for this. But my hope was is that I could put it in here and then it would just like slide through over there. But this is too big. So I'm going to put this back over here where I originally found it. Man, I got to undo my knot. And then put this thing away. And then I have to re-strategize. Yeah, I try not to. I try not to be one of those people who's like, "Oh, I know it sounds hypocritical, but I, I don't like for certain things while I'm working on it. I try not to just put it down and forget about it too much. Because I'm that one of those people. Like when I get into the mood doing certain things, I get pretty uh, focused on it. So I don't want to be like, oh, "Okay, let me go." Ahead. No, this thing is too small. You can see the width of it. See it. And then also because it's two, it's a little hard. But what can be done instead is if I had a thicker one, a bigger one, that would work really well. But yeah, you see, like the width about this and this, this is too small for this. If it was much bigger, it would work really well, but I don't have that. The other thing that I could do is I want to cut it in half and then just have it loop that way. Actually, wait a second. I think I have one of these things on my pants, let's see. It's uh, one of those like... See, so this one, you gotta basically put it in here. Kind of tough. I mean, it's kind of tough because it's like you gotta snake it in there while pressing this thing down. See? So here's one. And then I got the other one that I gotta do too. Uh oh. In case you're wondering how come it doesn't look like I'm doing this closer, it's because I have the tripod right in front of my face. So usually I would do this much closer to my face. There we go. Okay, let's see. So I'm gonna tighten this in a bit. I 
you guys can see. And um, let's put this back over here. I don't know. That looks pretty good. Uh, well, let's see. We have that. So I'm going to put this back. This little tail, that part. See, the thing about this is, like, you see regular athletic pants, it has, like, these two little shoelaces. This one has, because it's a loop, that's why I'm thinking, like, hey, that tells me that there was supposed to be a little plastic bit over here. I could cut it in half. I 100% could cut that in. Yeah, I don't think I have anything that would fit in there. Not for these, at least. So it's very tempting to just cut this in half and then let him uh, do it that way. You see where I'm getting at? Because if I can't find the plastic bit to this thing, he's going to have to knot it anyway. So my thinking is, is just cut this in half and then... I'll knot it somewhere, and then that way it's a little better. Make sense? So I'm just going to cut it. Yeah. Because if I cut it, that way he can tighten it. You know, you could just go like that and then do it that way. So, see? Like that. Do I have the shrink tube? No, I don't have the shrink tube. I, I need that little plastic bit that keeps it like nice and uh, snug. But I don't have one of those bits. So the easiest thing to do is just cut this in half, not each end. But my problem is with that is, is that unless I do some repairs over here, it's going to go fall right through. You see? That's the only downside because you can see how... Since this is, what, 17 years old, there's a lot of, see, so I'd have to repair this part as well. And that, I mean, I could do this, I, I could fix it, but still, you know, that's quite a bit. No, no, what I'm saying is that I'm afraid that this loop is going to go, fall right through here. That's what I'm trying to get at. So if he wants, he could just do it like this, if he wanted to, see. But uh, it would be better if I had that little plastic bit. I just don't have a plastic bit. Yeah, those are like the athletic 
simplicity's sake. I will probably just say not the damn thing. Um, no, it's not that. What I'm worried about is, is that, look at this really quick, you guys. It's not just the fraying. Like, I'm not worried about the fraying, okay? What I'm worried about is if I cut it, this thing might go all the way back here. Because you see, it's like, if this thing gets lost, that's actually going to cause more trouble for him if he loses it um, in here. Does that make sense? So, like, having a shoelace or a knot would work really well, I think. Well, let's see. Or maybe I could just triple knot it. Yeah, I think that would work really well. Let's see, let's cut this in half. Yeah, you know what? Hell with it. I'm just going to cut it. I'm going to cut it. Uh, is this made out of... Say, I'm gonna just cut it. Yeah, I know. You can you can melt the fibers. I've seen that before. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. Fire! Fire! Okay, let's see. And go a little back here. Don't do this so close to wood, by the way, you guys. <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, I think this is pretty good, actually. I think this is pretty good. Um, so, if he wanted to do this, I just did this, and I'll do a single knot here. Let's see. I will knot this way. Make it look a little nice. And then I will fold this one. See, let's try to do one this way and the other one this way. See, so I'm trying to go this way outward and this way inward. See how this looks. That looks pretty nice. Okay. So, overall, if he wanted to tie his pants, he could just go like this. Ta da! It's fixed. That took a little bit of time. And I think this is going to be fine because I think this knot is not going to pull it through. I was a little worried because I thought, well, what if this pulls through? But I think if I, you know, this is going to be wide enough and I have enough slack. And if not, uh, too bad. So overall, overall, this thing has been fixed. And once more. Ta-da! And that was a pretty easy fix. Um, just took a little bit more thinking. But this is the kind of stuff that, again, I like doing. And uh, I find it to be like a little puzzle. Uh, I remember, I remember like the first time that I started doing this kind of stuff. It's like when you do it, you kind of think like, oh, it's a waste. When you first do it, you think it's like a waste of time. But you have like little pieces of satisfaction. And you feel like a little bit of satisfaction towards that. I'm going to put my little tool kit away. And then that is it. That it is. That is it. Uh, I'm going to give this to Lewis. See what he thinks about it. 
And now, instead of looking at this little knot that was unfixable, now he knows what he can do. Um, now he knows that he can wear these pants and not have to worry about it. This took me 21 minutes, but you can see a lot of it was just brainstorming. And um, yeah, I kind of want to move this down. Yeah, this is gonna sound strange, but you ever see like sometimes they do these like nice knots when they um on fabrics. I've always wondered, is that handmade? You know, like the knots on um like certain fabrics, like hoodies and stuff. Is that handmade or is that machine made? Because like for me, you can see like when I do it, it's not perfect, and I can't imagine some freaking factory worker spending thirty minutes or thirty seconds or so to make it perfect. Yeah, this is just me trying to make this look a little nicer. Okay. Like the, the knots on hoodies. They always look so perfect. Like, you know a factory worker isn't spending this much time to make it like this. If they have millions to make. Is that good? This is just me being... Okay, I think that's pretty good. It's not going to be perfect anyway. So, so this is my thing over here. And yeah, so you can use these pants again. And yeah, so one, two, three, four. And it goes back in the closet, it goes. Mmm, what over here? Woohoo! Let's see really quickly. Stomping grounds in Hawaii. Uh. Uh, you got several hundred. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, if you got several hundred, you definitely do have it down a lot better than I do, for sure. I gotta, I gotta put this in the freaking store. So, uh, I just wanted to show you guys this stuff and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this or maybe you guys kind of like learned something about what you can do if you guys have a knot or if they have a stuck knot, stuck knot, stuck, stuck knot because if you just spend a little time trying to problem solve, like even if you fail, like you saw me do uh, hot failures, right? Even if you fail, you just kind of think to yourself like, okay, you know what? I can find a solution. Maybe I won't figure out the solution today. Maybe it'll be tomorrow. But with persistence, you'll find success. And I know people will look at this and they'll be like, it's just, it's just undoing a knot and just cutting it in half and knotting it. But this kind of stuff I think is important to keep in mind because if you do have this situation in the future, like don't just dismiss it and say, ah, oh, you know, it's like, oh, I'll do it later and later. Because as Lewis said, right, he's had this since 2003. And he told me when he was showing me it, he was like, look, Erica, this is an impossible knot. And I was looking at it. I was like, there's no way this thing is impossible. 100%. I just need to poke, put some kind of like tool in there and then just pry it and make it, you know, loosen it up, as you guys saw with the mini screwdriver. Uh, if you don't have a screwdriver, you could use something like a tweezer. You could something use something like a nail file and then maybe use a ballpoint pen, you know, with the maybe trying to like wedge it in there when it's bigger and then just pull it out. Um, or you can even use pliers, right? If you can get one, one, um, like a needle nose plier, you can, if you get it through like one little hoop and that's it. But once you loosen up a knot, it's like game over for the knot. It's just a matter of time. And from there, yeah, it's just all this kind of stuff. So, um, so, you know, this is like a small little success. But doing things like this, as I said, it builds confidence. It sounds so silly, but when you know you can, you have small little victories in life, it makes a huge 
huge difference, in my opinion, on self-esteem because you don't think of it as, hey, this knot is going to defeat me. It turns into, I'm going to conquer this thing and I'm going to make sure that this thing works again. And uh, I like I like these kind of challenges. You know, I enjoy it. And this does, you don't have to be super smart. You just need to be persistent. I also thank you guys because some of you guys told me, hey, try this, try this, try this. And um, yeah, so thank you so much for telling me, oh, you know, maybe think about shrink wrapping it or using a shoelace instead or burning the edges. Um, and yeah, it, it worked out really well. Semen knot, filler, filler. The uh, thing about this is like, semen knot. Let's look that up really quick. Let's look this up, semen knot. I can't, I can't switch because this is not OBS. Well, let's check this out. Oh crap. By the way, I probably will get rid of the wooden stools. You know the ones that I told you guys about? I'm probably going to get rid of it because, here, let me show you. So look at these. So these are the old stools and these are the new ones but these ones are so freaking heavy you guys it's like unbearable it's like 20 pounds each and i personally think those ones are more comfortable than these ones so i'm probably just going to keep these ones or just um they do have seat covers for those things but we'll see yeah yeah i actually ended up things are and well i actually ended up uh getting a little screwdriver a flathead and then doing it that way. One minute. Come on, internet. Come on. Internet, why are you so? internet yeah my computer takes a while uh, to to connect to internet what is taking so long? I'm still, I'm still trying to connect to internet. Oh my God. I told you guys before, I'm, sometimes I'm like, what takes so long for this internet to connect? Okay, here we go. It's going. Oh crap, never mind, it's not going. Come on. Come on, you can do it internet. Hmm. Yeah, you know the only downside about that is, uh, so the, the semen's not, seems like it would work really well. The only downside is, is that I want it to be adjustable. So if Lewis wants to, you know, make it tighter or looser or whatnot, he can just instantly go like this, you know. It's not going to be, it's not going to be the prettiest. I think that this looks like it didn't have too much slack, but, you know, he could just go like that. That would work pretty well. So. And you just need to pull one of those things out. But good way to reuse clothing or yeah, repair it. So yeah, I learned something. I learned something new today. Yeah, I don't really know much knots. I don't use knots very much. I think the only knots I know how to use is What's my calls it? Oh my gosh. I'll show you the knot, but I forgot what it is. Like, I know there's a knot name for it. Let me grab it. Is this even a knot? Here, you guys can tell me if this is a knot. So it's the one where you, where you basically make a loop and then you just, you know, you make a, you make a knot loop and then you just do this. Like I use this one a lot. But this is like basically the only knot I use besides like a traditional bow knot or you know a regular knot. 
So I have this one. That knot I use a lot when I'm trying to like hang flowers, but I haven't been doing that in a while because I kind of grew out of my dried floral phase. And uh, I'm actually, I actually got rid of a lot of dried floral in this apartment. Half hitch, okay. So if you guys ever, ever, ever need any half hitch or not, not uh, guidance, Anya is really good at that stuff, not me. Uh, if you were a stay-at-home cat mom, if so, what do your daily responsibilities look like? Uh, so basically, I wake up. So this is what I do in the morning, right? Basically, I wake up, I clean up, and then after I clean up, I make eggs, run the dishwasher, sometimes cook a bit, take care of after the cat, sweep around the house, organize things. Then if Lewis needs uh, things like thumbnails, then I'll do that. I spend a lot of time researching online. Sometimes I'll find articles, and then when I find articles, then I'll share it with him. And then I'll also do things like decluttering, that kind of stuff. That's about it. Um, ish kind of things, but it takes a lot more time than it seems, for sure. A lot of time is spent just, like, cleaning up after the cats. Like, the cats are actually quite messy. But that doesn't take up my whole entire day. I just kind of think to myself, like, hey, let me streamline stuff. Never tie my shoes. Oh no, you got you no. Know, I feel like I tie my shoes. I can't imagine just doing the single kind of knot. But that is it. That is yeah. I think that is it. I think I'm gonna end the stream because it seems like it's a little long winded. I do have to. I do have uh, some things that I need to take care of today, and uh, also as usual, always, always, always decluttering and organizing and yeah. Uh, I do want to share with you guys, I have been watching House of Cards. So I watched, uh, I think, first five episodes with Lewis. I'm absolutely addicted to that show now. Uh, this one with Kevin Spacey. You know the woman uh, who is, I think her name is Claire Underwood, Frank's wife? Man, I just thought, man, I want to be that class and I want to be that elegant. So that's one of those things. It's like you see them and it's like... They look just so poised and so classy, and I just feel like I'm kind of not, I'm, I'm not that eloquent, but I wish I was, for sure. I think House of Cards, it's part of it, you know, of course, part of it is just way too dramatic. Uh, there's parts of it that you see a lot of scheming involved. But although nobody asked, I do think that kind of scheming happens um, more often than we think in terms of life. You know, there are people out there, they'll say, hey, let me go ahead and try to get allies or try to make sure that I can hold something against another person for, you know, like, I scratch your back, you scratch my back. I'm sure it happens, you know, in terms of politics and careers and um, whatnot. So I look at that kind of thing. And one of the thing that really stood out to me about House of Cards and um, it was I looked at the decor of Frank and Claire's home and you can see it's very minimalistic. It's very, it's very sleek and it's very sexy. And I just thought to myself, I want to live that kind of aesthetic. Like that's what I've been trying to go towards, but it's hard because, you know, it's just like clear, 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 clear. You have storage space. It's a lot bigger, right? Than this apartment for sure. But there's something very, sexy and very sleek about having clear surfaces and everything's kind of hidden away and you don't see um what appears to be clutter at all and i know i know people would say erica that's just a tv show it's not real but i think it can be real it's just people have enough storage space for their stuff you know they got hidden cabinets they got islands kitchen islands they can put stuff in we don't have any of that um at all so it's a little it, it's it's like a whole different thing over here and then also if like the cats puke i'm not gonna think oh let me make sure i have all my cleaners away so it's more aesthetic i if the cats puke right i want to have everything on standby so i have paper towels i have cleaner and uh that that's really something so i see that kind of life and i think i want to get closer to it I'm not there yet, 
hundred percent. I'm not there yet, but I feel like every time I just move forward, it just gets me closer and closer and closer. And in case you guys are wondering, I am wearing all ooh, look at my lip. Um, I am wearing all black today again, and uh, Lewis is, was kind of like, "Oh wow, you know, wearing black again." And it looks nice. And I was like, "Yeah, I'm trying to be more. I'm trying to be more focused in terms of my aesthetics, and it's not." It's easy, but it's hard at the same time. My goal is, as I get older, I become more regimented. And when I look at aesthetics, it's just everything is just... I don't want to say perfect, but it's pretty damn close to perfect. And uh, I guarantee you, right? In the future, I'd like to be in a place where I have a lot of storage space. A lot of storage space, so if I do have things out, I have cabinets I can put it in. And the whole idea about being minimalistic with storage you know hidden storage like everything looks sleek you don't see ketchup bottles and things like that you don't things see things out and about would mean so much to me um just because i really care about aesthetics in that way i think that if you have less clutter less colors it makes things look more pretty but it's hard if you don't have um storage space to put things in you see where i'm getting at and uh, yeah, so I'm not an interior designer, obviously. I do have hits, I do have misses, but my hope is is that as I get older, I get more, I get more experience, and then I just kind of like, okay, you know, I know exactly what would be perfect here. I know what would be aesthetic, and after I feel like I hit a certain aesthetic, I don't add anything else, and that would be basically sleek sexy minimalistic and um that's it so i would not be much of a consumer after that uh, i want my goal is i've shared this before right my goal is to have an area that looks so refined and so polished and so classy and so sleek and minimalistic that i don't have to deal with that you know i don't have to think about that too much and then i can focus on other things you know i can focus on okay i had a really busy day I came home from work and I don't have to clean up much because the freaking place already almost always looks spotless. Um, and that kind of thing. See? No, but look at, look at, um, look at, uh, House of Cards. Um, look at House of Cards and then you'll see what I'm talking about. Like, if you look at Frank and Claire's home, you can see there's a lot of like sleek lines. It's very refined and classy looking. And I look at it and I don't think it's daunting. It's just you can't have too many freaking colors and you gotta make sure you have like consistency. I find that it's very important to be mindful about colors because although colors are beautiful, don't get me wrong, if you're looking for a black and white aesthetic, you're not doing yourself any favor if you have pink yellow green blue like that gets you away from your your color goal and i know people would say oh erica it sounds so boring just going black white silver and brown and that's it but i i i kind of welcome it you know i kind of welcome it Oh, the, the wooden stuff? Yeah, let me show you guys this one. This thing, this is actually wrought iron. Um, so it's super durable. But see all this stuff over here? I can't freaking... I organize this damn thing, but I can't do anything about it because I have no storage space. Like, these are open cabinets, you see? I don't have a door that I can put here to hide up all the vitamins and stuff. That's what irritates me a little. So... It's like, I would like, you know, people would say, well, why don't you organize? I would say, this thing is freaking hella organized. It's just the colors are all over the place. And that irritates me a little bit. Like, I've organized that shelf, like, at least five times. And even then, I still feel like it looks cluttered. And, and I look at it, and I'm like, what am I going to get rid of? Like, my cooking sauces? No. And shelves are meant to be used, right? But I just wish there was a freaking door. Uh, wrought iron. Yeah, yeah. Tea, oh, tea oil? You're talking about, like, some kind of, uh... The only downside is that they're so freaking heavy. Restain them? They're heavy. That's the only thing I don't like about them. They're really heavy. They're, like, 20 pounds each. 
These 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 things are 20 pounds each. They're really heavy. This is like solid wood. See? I can't believe I carried both of them home, but I did. I managed to do it. So, uh, I'm gonna go talk to you guys later, and, uh, I know this was one tour pair stream, and this was just me talking about things, but I'm really excited about the future, and I'm really excited to see how much I grow in the next couple of years, uh, because I'm just moving forward and forward and forward and forward, and I hope that you guys, right, if you guys are insecure about raw, uh, W-R-O-U-G-H-T, um, so it's not cheap metal. I mean, this is freaking heavy metal. Uh, it has to be pretty. It it has to be pretty damn durable. Um, so yeah, I can hold my weight, and it can hold, of course, the weight of the wood. I showed you guys. Like this is. I think this was like about a hundred seventy dollars each. Cause I saw this online, and I looked it up, and I found something very similar. You guys can look at the base. You see how the base is round. You can find something similar online uh, for about a hundred fifty, hundred seventy dollars. So, yeah, these were these were nice stools, and I like them, but they're just freaking heavy. So, um, yeah, I kind of want to get rid of the padded ones, but uh, it's just it's kind of hard because it's like I I'm not used to sitting on a wood stool for a while, and it's a little high, so I'm probably gonna keep it for a little bit, and then say, do I want to keep it? Am I gonna get used to it, or do I just want to toss it? Um, not toss it, but like just give it away for free, cause if I'm not using it, right? Why am I storing it? You can see it takes quite a bit of space in the kitchen too, but all that stuff, you know, I wish I was good at interior design, I wish I could tell you, like, oh, this would match perfectly over here, but a lot of the stuff that I do, it's kind of hit or miss, so, uh, if I feel like this is why I would say, I would like to, I would ideally like to bring in, like, an interior designer, because an interior designer could say, oh, you know, this would be perfect for this, or this would be perfect for this, but it's not gonna happen, <laughs> so I gotta try to figure it out for myself for the time being. Sell them, sell it. Nah, I'm going to give it away for free. I could sell it, but I picked it up for free from someone, and I just kind of think, hey, nah. I'll just, if those people gave it away for free, I'm going to give it away for free for two. Um, I'm really happy that I got it, though. I was surprised. I was the only person who claimed it. But some people, yeah, some people could sell that for about $100 each. I could probably get both of them for about $150, but I'm... I'm not gonna do it because uh, I figure like whoever got it they probably paid a pretty penny for it and maybe they thought well I'll give it away for free and then maybe someone else will you know someone else will get it for free and then they'll be really thankful for it um, mm -hmm. but I don't you know I don't um, I'm not one of those people where and I I respect people who who do decide to like sell free stuff but for me I'm kind of like nah if someone gave it away for free I'll just pass it on for free but yes yeah, people they're kind of like oh erica you know you give away a lot of stuff for free like isn't that a lot of money and i'm like i picked it up for free so i'm not really worried about losing out on money yeah these are these are expensive stools like once i saw them i i saw them before so i had a i was thinking to myself like oh crap those are pretty pricey um this is not like ikea or anything like that so yeah i'll talk to you guys later oh wait actually hold up hey So let me show it to you. So you, the impossible knot, I actually um, undid it and then I cut it in half because I think there was supposed to be a plastic over here and I tried finding a piece but we didn't have one. So you can just tie it up and use it like a regular belt. Here you Look go. At you. your, yeah. little, your little clothes repair woman. Well, What's your chat thing? My uh, chat was good job. happy. Yeah, chat good, helped very me. Good job. You know what else chat recommended? Chat recommended that I melt the edges of it so that way it fused. And... I found the next gray there. Huh? I found the next gray. You did? Yes. What, the pants? No. Oh. I was going to say, what, you think 5 million people are going to be interested in looking at my pants repair? I doubt it. I found the gray girl. Okay. Okay, so Lewis thinks he found a good video to make a uh, good viral video or something. But I know. 
I'm waiting for I'm waiting for Oreo to break out of the algorithm. I've been trying. You can't say I've been just talking about it. I've been trying to get o Oreo to become viral, but it's not happening. Why not? He's not cute. That's your opinion. How could the freaking great go viral and not Oreo pet? You know how many times I tried to chill Oreo? I see the potential this cat. I'm not gonna stop. Either. Okay. Mario says bye, you guys. See ya.